Hi, I'm Robin Boyce for City Corner. We've got a great show today full of STEM research and an aquarium coming to St. Louis. Come on back. And welcome to our studios. I'm Robin Boyce for City Corner. And with me this morning is a wonderful lady who is about STEM. And she says black girls do STEM. Her name is Miss Cynthia Chapo, and she's the founder of this great organization. And she's got a couple of great workshops that are coming up uh, pretty soon to really get young people in the St. Louis area interested in STEM. Tell us, how did you decide to, to, to get into the researches of, of uh, sciences and technology and engineering and math? Well, in my day job, I'm a research and development chemist. and um, That's how. Okay. Yes, <laughs> right? And so I sort of walk into spaces every day as a research and development chemist that are sort of not diverse or you don't really see like black women showing up or just people of color in general. And so for me... Um, it was about sort of asking the question of why is that and sort of going out and volunteering and sort of showing up and showing that there is a black, you know, black women in science and black women in STEM to like give that representation to younger generations. Mm -hmm. um, but I always been sort of a curious type of student. And so for me, um, the mission is to spur that curiosity sure. in, in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, in the minds of black girls, but also to just show up and be an example so that they can see themselves as being able to be scientists and engineers um, and participate in like STEM disciplines and careers. And also like understand what does that really mean, this right. big word of STEM yes. when we say science. A lot technology. of folks don't understand it what it means. Yeah. Right? It's about the practical skills. Like how do we use science in our everyday life? Our workshops are gonna focus on cosmetic chemistry and biology, the science of taste. So those are two Excellent. very interesting things to girls. You know, now we're in the days where like, you know, the Kylie lip kits, so like girls yes. are crazy about lip gloss. And they don't understand that that's that it involves then, chemistry yes. for Kylie Jenner to do that. Then they yes. don't understand that. Kylie, yeah. Jim, Kylie Jenner has hired some amazing chemists to be on her cosmetics team, and so just like breaking down the things that they're naturally curious in and saying that this is science, right? This is scientists that are in the lab every day that are making these products that you use, that you go and yes. buy from the store. Lotions and, and lotions and, and shampoos and, and conditioning yes. and, and really connecting it to things that they already care about, that they're already interested in and saying, hey, you can make your own lip gloss. Yeah. Let me show you how. And it's that first little piece that gets them curious and then that they start asking questions about everything else. That sounds so interesting. Uh, you've got uh, your first workshop that's coming up on March 19th. Uh, that's on a Tuesday, March 19th. And how many folks do, are you needing for each workshop? Or are you reaching out for to, to fill this workshop up? Because I know you've got limited space and you've got one on Tuesday, yes. March 19th and Thursday, March 28th. So how many students are you looking to get on board okay. with you? So we're, we're going to have 20 slots for both of those days. Okay. So 20 kids on the March 19th and 20 students on the March 28th. And their ages should be? And their ages should be 11 to 14. So wow. our target population is really like the middle school, high school um, transition. So we're looking to work with sixth to ninth graders for the actual hands-on STEM workshop and curriculum. And we sort of foresee it being where we work with seventh, eighth, and ninth graders. Right. And they sort of age out of to the program and right. to the upperclassmen. Okay. And then we will have our black girls do STEM alumni. Well, ah. we sort of see them working in the leadership capacity with the younger students as we sort of, you know, have more students go through the program. Have you done this already or been a part of a program like this? Um, I've been a part of lots of programs that mm -hmm. have been focused on STEM. I haven't necessarily been a part of programs that was specifically just for girls. Okay. I have facilitated, well, specifically just for black girls. I have facilitated a Girls Who Code program, mm -hmm. um, facilitated other sort of science curriculum and science programs in schools locally and um, back in Indiana when mm -hmm. I was in college mm -hmm. in Illinois. Are you from the St. Louis area? I'm originally from Chicago. Okay. Okay, um, so, and you came to St. Louis to work then? Yes, I came okay. to St. Louis to work at Anheuser-Busch. Awesome, So that's awesome. what got me here. That's what got you yes. to the St. Louis area, and you saw that there was a need to yes. really get some young people interested in yes. the field, so you decided to have these workshops. Now, you're really hoping that um, you'll be able to uh, get young people to really understand 
and it looks like you've gone after that early middle age first. Why, why the middle school and not just go after those high schoolers? Uh, but because for me, I think to get kids, I think you lose kids by the time they're sophomores and okay. juniors in high school. Um, in my experience, I was a math and science tutor here in the St. Louis region for three years when I went back to grad school. So you've already worked with some um, kids, yeah, so you kind of know. And, and yeah. kids sort of show up defeated already okay. once they've gotten into like the maths and the algebras and they necessarily didn't master it eighth grade or ninth grade year. I think you have students that becomes less interested by the time they're junior or sing, a ju a sophomore or junior mm -hmm. to actually engage in STEM curriculum, whether it's because they've not done well, Right. Whether it's because they've been intimidated because of the misconception that you have to be good at math or you have to be excellent at all things science to understand biology, exactly. to experiment with chemistry. Mm -hmm. So I think they're less engaged. I think in middle school, kids are still, girls, especially girls, they're, they're still open enough to say, oh, let okay. me check this out. Let me see. Let me, mm -hmm. let me engage with this a little bit. I think mm -hmm. you can still change their minds about their own capabilities. I think it's a lot harder to do once they've gotten to a high school career where they've not sort of done well mm -hmm. um, in certain areas. Where are you reaching out to young people? Through the Girl Scouts, through different middle schools, school districts? What are, what are you doing yes. to get so I've reached out to individual school districts. I have also had conversations with um, leaders of specific Girl Scouts troops, okay. but trying to get in contact with Girls Inc. Um, okay. And just a lot of different organizations. Um, Thomas Dunn Learning Center is sponsoring. Yes, yes. My and good so I reached is, out to yeah, community centers. Yeah. I also have spoken with, you know, Youth and Family Center over on the north side on CAS to see if we can also have um, sort of a north, lo north side location Excellent. also running some of our workshops as well as the south side community center. So for me, this is about access and opportunity as much as it is about the exposure. And so what we know is we don't have enough STEM programming happening in certain areas, we in certain don't. neighborhoods. And, and, okay, so you're 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 uh, all about the access at yes, this point, and making sure is, individuals have yeah. an opportunity to mm -hmm. at least. To at and least mm -hmm. sign up and so it's about being readily present in certain communities in certain school buildings and in certain school districts wow. um, and so that takes a much more targeted approach but also still working with organizations such as Girl Scouts Girls Inc who brings in a lot of sort uh, of those do. students yes. and those from certain neighborhoods that don't necessarily yes. have touch points mm -hmm. of STEM outside of their traditional education mm -hmm. well we're gonna do something about getting you in contact <laughs> with Girls Inc and some of the other organizations out here that I know that deal with a lot yeah. of girls. Now you've got uh, your first set of workshops. Uh, um, you got one. Oh, I see you've got one starting on Saturday, March 9th yes. here. And um, it's going to be visualizing DNA. What's that going to be about? Yeah, so essentially we're partnering with the St. Louis Community um, Center, Center for Biotechnology. And so what we're going to have the girls do is essentially learn about different DNA, like the difference between plant DNA and animal DNA and human DNA versus like a cat or a dog DNA. And then we're going to have them actually visualize um, this DNA. So we talk about DNA um, extraction of a strawberry. I think that's a pretty common lab that a lot of people have done but then we also want to see what does human DNA look like or what does like animal and plant DNA look like and how does those things differ um, when we think about um, the difference between species and hmm. so it's about biotechnology when you think about breeding when you think about all of the different sort of like genetically modified organisms and, and research that's sort of going into like how do we produce better um, plants and mm -hmm. then how do we stabilize ecosystems Wow. Um, and things of that nature. So it's all about learning the difference between, you know, biology of yes. different um, species. That makes a big difference being able to understand all of those different kinds of sciences because a lot yeah. of people, um, I'm a part of a, a, an advisory board for um, a medical high school here. And when we began to build that high school, we were basically looking at medicine. Uh -huh. And we didn't think, you know, we didn't think, oh, we can expand into animal science, animal plant science, science, plant science. Um, all, all these different kinds of sciences that mm -hmm. have everything to do with the way we live in the and, world today. Mm -hmm. And I the mean, way we do medicine. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, which yeah. is totally, I mean, and, and you just, ne you never think about that until you sit down around a bunch of people who are in these different fields, uh -huh. who bring all these wonderful concepts and ideas to the table that, oh my God, 
I could go into this field, you yeah. know. I mean, it's like, who got, who got you interested in the sciences and math? What, what got you interested? You know, I, I happen to have just been one of those kids that was naturally curious. Okay. And this was just very sort of like hands on. Did you always like it in, in high I, school? You know, then, I, wanted or, I, mean, to in school? Know, I wanted to know everything. Okay. Right? Okay. Like I was like, <laughs> I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> I like Good. the idea of a challenge. And so for me, that meant that I dove really deep into things and, like and really deep in understanding things. And I had some teachers who noticed that, that okay. said, hey, you should go and do this science program or you should go and do this um, biology camp. Right. And it was through those sort of extracurriculums or things that wasn't necessarily in traditional education right. that helped me realize that oh I could I could do this I could be a scientist and then I had a mentor as a high school student who was an aeronautical engineer for NASA awesome and she awesome. was just amazing Great. Um, and so it just like you know showed me as like a young black woman and mm -hmm. I think at the time maybe she was in her early 20s oh wow. you know and so me looking at her I was like oh that's amazing mm -hmm. you know but I just always have been naturally hands-on and curious and I think someone, you know, all of my head teachers and, and sisters who mm -hmm. sort of steered me into the right path mm -hmm. with that sort of natural inclination. You know, that's really, really important. I heard you there uh, loud and clear when it comes to young people that you've tutored, mm -hmm. you've noticed how defeated they felt when they came to the yeah. tutoring class because yeah. they, they just didn't get the concept yeah. of that formula, how to get, yeah. you know, sometimes it can be very difficult yeah. sometimes. So what, what would you say to people about making sure young people really feel good about the failure, but mm -hmm. moving forward on that failure and learning a whole lot more about how to mm -hmm. get to the answer of that equation and making them feel good about coming into this class? Because yeah. they didn't make it fun in my day, I'm going to tell yeah. you. <laughs> Well, I had some really awesome teachers that I really enjoyed going into their class, and then I had some yeah. not so great teachers. So I think, like when when people ask me, what would I what 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 would I say to young people? And it's just like, um, figure out what start figuring out what you're interested in. Okay, you know, start. Uh, being curious about the things that you care about and solving the problems that you care about. And I think naturally for me, you'll find some type of science or some type of STEM or some type of thing that's mm -hmm. applicable to your interest. And I think we have a duty and a responsibility yes. as sort of the adults in the room, whether it's a, a traditional educator or someone like myself who's going to be in a volunteer capacity, to make sure we notice every kid yeah. and make sure we try to bring out that piece um, that's relatable to them that they care about in the lesson mm -hmm. to help them sort of get past that mm -hmm. um, that failure and also like just get through the class just get through you the know class. just get through the class just get through the class I, um, and understand don't it. use calculus every day but right. I took calculus as a college student but, but we, I don't, you I don't to. use it I don't but use still, it every day you use it a little bit somewhere though it comes yeah. it comes back with I thank you so much yes. for coming in thank you so much Cynthia I saw Cynthia on Facebook y'all okay it works <laughs> All right, I was just going through and I saw this girl all excited and I wanted to get you in here to talk about yes. what you're doing and, and black girls do do STEM. You Thank do you so STEM. much. You've got some workshops that are coming up. We'll have the flyers that are up on the screen for you and you can get more information on black girls do STEM. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love it. We will be back with more information on an aquarium that's coming to St. Louis. Finally, we get one with a big fish in it and everything. We'll be right back. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Uh, 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 there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home.
and hello, I'm Robin Boyce for City Corner and back in the studios with me right now is Ms. D Diane Bayhoff, who's Executive Director of the St. Louis Aquarium Foundation. Hello, Diane. Hi. So happy you're here. I'm so geeked and excited about this aquarium coming to St. Louis. I mean, Yay. when I saw the, the first few stories about it, I just like, oh, wow, finally, because I've, I've had in my dreams aquariums in certain areas of the St. Louis, even the airport, okay? <laughs> uh, even the airport, yeah. I've, uh, I, I pictured an aquarium and I think they talked about it at one time, having one on the riverfront near the yeah. arch. Yeah. Um, but you know, I never thought Union Station. Yeah. Tell us about this fantastic opportunity that St. Louis has coming before it. Yeah, you're, you're so right. And um, it is gonna be a state of the art and yes. beautiful and wonderful facility that it's in, but bringing this aquarium um, to uh, to the people of St. Louis, but yes. also tourists and help, you know, another thing that can help mm -hmm. bring people to our region, yes. um, which we need as well. And um, it's something that I think we're ready for and we deserve. We're yes. one of the biggest cities without an aquarium yeah, in the country. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm saying you have to go to sheds in uh, Chicago mm -hmm. and yeah. some other ones across the country. And of course, I've been to the ones on the West Coast yeah. and they're just beautiful. Sure. But, you know, people always, well, how are you going to get a stingray in here or, or a uh, whale or a dolphin? <laughs> I'm like, why not? You know, you just yeah. control the temperatures. They do the same thing in Chicago, and that's one of the coldest yeah. cities in the Midwest. But uh, tell us a little bit more. Now, you're part of the foundation. Tell us about the foundation and how people can help there. Yeah, so the foundation is the nonprofit partner mm -hmm. to the St. Louis Aquarium at Union Station. Yes. So specifically, that means um, our goal is to engage the community in it. Um, and that would be through access and education programs Excellent. in particular, um, and in the realm of um, being a champion for water stewardship um, on that conservation realm. Great, great. And uh, really just want to help people understand the importance of our rivers and our oceans and yes. their vital importance to us all. A lot of times people don't really realize how important it is to have clean water, yeah. clear water, and um, so you'll be demonstrating or talking about that or people can experience that when it comes to the aquarium? Yeah, and we're kind of in the process of, of formulating all of that and are the interpretives and signage mm -hmm. that you'll come across in the aquarium. So, yeah. you know, really we want you to come to the aquarium mm -hmm. and have these amazing engaging hands-on or hands wet experiences yes. and uh, touch things and um, and see them up close and hopefully you'll be inspired and and how how what does all this mean and why are these rivers important and right um, one of the exhibits is that one of the first things you come to is a confluence of the Mississippi and Missouri Excellent. River and um, I think it's was important to all of us to have this local connection mm -hmm. and we live in the middle of the country, yes. we're landlocked, and mm -hmm. so, you know, why should we care about the oceans? Well, we should care because we have these amazing, the two largest rivers in the country yes. converge here. Yes. Um, and all that water flows into the Gulf of Mexico mm -hmm. and it flows into the oceans and it has an effect and keeping it clean is yes. important. Um, it's our drinking water mm -hmm. for many of us, mm -hmm. um, depending on your uh, water source, um, mm -hmm. the Merrimack and the Missouri, and uh, it, we take it for granted, and I do too. We all yes. do because we have so much water here, and we don't even think about it. We don't. Whereas in California, they have water shortages, and yeah, it's um, huge. And out trying there. to figure out, you know, how you're going to have sustainable water forever, and um, so really just starting to get people to think about that, and what's that spark going to be, mm -hmm. and what can you do in your life that might make a difference um, exactly. for water, and and it's starting small, and then then what else can you do, and, and grow from there. Now, the, are you going to have a model of the confluence of what it looks like uh, that the Illinois River, Mississippi River, and the Missouri River coming together? Is there going to be something there that kind of shows people that this is where it it starts for Missouri and and moving on, or what this is what a confluence means for young yes. people? Yes, and, and a few different ways. So um, before you even go in, we have this place. Um, it's actually outside as you walk in, mm -hmm. called River Park. And um, it's actually part of the foundation oh. in the way that it's etched. Um, it has the old railroads um, yeah. tracks coming in, and those will all be labeled and some signage about the importance of our train travel um, yes. and put St. Louis on the map as yes. well. Um, of course, the rivers were the original transportation mm -hmm. um, sources, and also the rivers will be etched into the ground as well, and kids can even play oh, in it no, a little that's bit. That's going to be neat. Um, and um, <clears throat> they're actually oriented, you know, correctly. Mm -hmm. um, 
directionally and uh, signage on the confluence. So really starting that great. aquatic combination of this train station in St. Louis yes. history before you even get in. Um, and then there's the Conservation Education Center, which is part of the Aquarium Foundation. And it's a free space. It's about 7,500 square feet mm -hmm. uh, before you even go in the aquarium. So mm -hmm. it's a space you can go in and learn more about our watershed. Uh, the Mississippi watershed yes. in particular will be highly featured in there. Um, it drains 40% of the water um, from our country, and it goes into the Gulf of Mexico. If you look at it on a map, which we'll have, um, all the different water sheds across the country, and you can type in your zip code and mm. be like, that's where my water goes, and it shows you How that it's all going into the oceans eventually. Now that's going to be really interesting. You can almost spend a, uh, an afternoon in, the, in this particular yeah, aquarium. Yeah, it could. It's like a, a science, um, you know, interactive exhibits mm -hmm. and hands-on things for adults and kids, mm -hmm. um, as much as you want to dive deeper in it. Sure. And uh, yeah, so it's um, it'll be a great space, and we're Is still developing aquarium it. Aquarium yeah. science, something you've already been interested in? Is this that your background? or um, no I mean not I've always loved animals yes. and I actually have worked at two zoos okay um, in my uh, career and uh, so for a total of 20 years I worked okay. um, at zoos and uh, one of them had a, a small aquarium as well so mm -hmm. I just I love animals I grew up on a lake um, okay in Arkansas and so I've always been comfortable and I love water mm -hmm. I, I love lakes as well and um, it's just swimming and just being a yeah. part of nature. So yeah. that was, I was always outside and all of that. So you're comfortable um, with the water. So yeah, you know, oh, yeah I love that. This um, and uh, maybe I'll even dive with the sharks someday if we allow that. Now, when, yeah, we look, when we look at the Union, Union Station and, and we've seen it go through major metamorphosis, yeah. major metamorphosis over the years, where is it going to be positioned? Because that, it looks like it's going to be huge. It's going to be two stories, mm -hmm. three stories high, or how's that going to look? That's gonna yeah, be huge. if anybody's familiar with when yeah. it was the mall, yeah. um, that's helpful. And the two story part of the mall so where the food court was and hula hands yes. and so really? and the fudgery guys um so that's that whole section will be the aquarium yes. in two story as well yes yep and um, it'll take you through the freshwater side starting with the confluence and oh, really keeping it local going into global rivers mm -hmm. and then we have our otters our first two-story exhibit which oh, will be great real animals that are those yeah, the yeah. otters oh, oh my they're goodness. adorable okay. yeah. now the fish what kind of fish are we going to have okay well oh gosh I mean, we have everybody's going to be there. We, dolphins? <laughs> no, dolphins. You know. no. <laughs> we are no. We don't have any uh, aquatic mammals. It's, um, the otters are the only mammal, but um, we will have um, an entire tank of sharks and rays sharks. and ocean species. So that's half wow. of the aquarium just on itself, and it's one big, huge. 250,000 gallon tank. That's got to be pretty awesome. Yeah. 60 to sharks and rays, all 60. kinds of different ocean fish from the little bitty ones mm -hmm. all the way up to the big sharks. And actually there's a, um, a ray I was just learning about, which mm -hmm. is called a devil ray. And they get up to longer than my arm span, a little wow. about six feet long when they're at a, a full grown. And they're so going to be swimming be around in this big tank. With the long, so they're yeah. going to make this aquarium look like the sea level or, oh, or yeah. the, the actual yeah. That has got to be phenomenal. And a whole touch pools area as well, right before you go over so there. So the kids get a chance to kind of stick their mm -hmm. hands in and, and touch adults, some of the fish. Some adults haven't done it either. So, you know, it's a great opportunity to really um, experience it. And so it'll be some invertebrates and a tank of that, and then a tank for turtle feeding. Wow. And then a tank for um, stingrays and small sharks. That you now, can some touch. of the renderings I saw where some people were hooked up to some kind of a jumping cable kind of, of apparatus. Is that gonna be? I think that was probably the ropes course. Yes. If I'm, if I, yes. I, I yes, hope anyway. Um, and so that is actually, it's the inside part. I thought it was part. a trapeze thing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. It's right over the shark tank. No, 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 no. It's, <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a separate from the aquarium, but okay. it's on the upstairs portion. So ah. if you're buying your ticket, you can look up and see people. You're gonna on have the stuff with plenty of things to do down there. That's then. what's so great about it. And honestly, that's what inspired me to come over to this project as wow. um, the vision mm -hmm. that they have for mm -hmm. Union Station and downtown and there's so much great things happening downtown they got the arch you know renovations the soldiers memorials now reopen and then the Union yes. stations maybe a soccer stadium maybe soccer then stadium, Cortex yeah. and the foundry mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this whole arch to park project which will go right in front of Union Station it's just so much potential and yes. wonderfulness and getting people um, you know, re-engaged with downtown, and it's yes, just, I'm just it so excited about definitely it. Definitely will. So. Union Station is a big, big miss uh, in the area. It was a great mall to go to. It had great restaurants down yeah, there for a little while, did. and the fudgery is coming it back. <laughs> I know you're excited the about that. Back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the fudgery is coming back this in is the lobby good. of the aquarium.
This is Look really out good. For those guys, yeah. Oh wow! So there were new owners that came in and took over Union Station. Correct. How did this? How so did this all happen? LHM is a local company, family-owned. Um, Bob and Steve O'Loughlin, and okay. um, they're hoteliers. They own about 18 hotels in our region. So a very committed to wanting St. Louis to just be a great, even greater than it already is. We still have um, the classy uh, spaces in Union Station, though. That's oh, absolutely yeah. a gorgeous the building. Grand Hall, yep. you, the Grand Hall is still the same. Mm -hmm. It's going to be still as, just as beautiful for people to go and relax and yep. just wait to go. And, and it, it's still a hotel. And yep. it, they still have mm -hmm. the hotel there as yep. well. They renovated all of that. They mm. And then the Grand Hall, they added the digital light shows, which oh. come on. And there's 14 different themes. And it's just a gorgeous just place to go have a drink before you go to a ball yes. game or something and, yes um, or if you're staying over and uh, yeah and a lot of conventions come through there they renovated that the other part of the mall that was kind of in that big open space um, that's been renovated and the restaurants so, yeah. in the back they used to be in the uh, near the parking lot mm -hmm. area are there still there are there new ones coming in or what's going on? yes and no so Landry's okay. is still there Landry's um, yeah, okay so very they're good there and um, we are renovating so LHM will now operate the um, what used to be hard rock Oh yes, yeah. And we so love be going a down soda there. Soda fountain, old-fashioned ice cream, candy oh, emporium neat. with an ornate bar as well. So yeah. we can do these like amazing shakes and um, maybe some boozy shakes for the adults. Yes, yes. Um, so just a real fun uh, place for families to go hang. And the whole, of course, the Ferris wheel. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be open all Tell year. Tell us about this Ferris wheel. <laughs> yep. I, they said observation wheel. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a what Ferris it's called. wheel. Oh my god. So is it in the, the where the parking lot area is? Or where is it going to be located? Yeah. So if on if you're familiar with 20. Street and mm -hmm. where Maggie O'Brien's is, yes. it'll be on that side of the Union Station, okay. so right outside the train shed. Oh. Uh, 200 feet tall, you'll be able to see into the Mississippi and Illinois and all the way west, and uh, enclosed gondolas, so it's air conditioned and heated. Oh, yeah. wait, really? So yeah, yeah, and there will be a train park place where you can just grab a a soda or a drink and you know watch your kids play putt putt miniature golf course there a carousel so this is going to really be a nice family yes. place to come and hang out and do really good things now this is a place where folks can have parties and weddings yep. yep oh and we do they have a lot of weddings already but i think it'll we've already gotten requests for Oh. wanting to be the first wedding you know to oh. happen with the aquarium open and oh. um, we're not quite you know there on scheduling yet but yeah it's it's the interest is there and people are so great in the community and so excited yes. about it have been so helpful i mean even mm -hmm. with advice and just we've been talking to everybody some of the history that you've been hearing and about history and, yeah and, um you know educational organizations i we've just been everybody's been so great well so. i'm i'm really glad to hear that this is what's going on in st louis okay. finally we're getting an Yay. aquarium i'm so excited i want to be the first in line we i told we'll you get that you in. We'll get i want to go to yeah. all the parties the red carpet <laughs> i want to be there with the fish okay? we are going to have quite the grand <laughs> opening so <laughs> thank um, you we'll so much diane you know. no, i appreciate you. you for coming in and talking sure. with us about it and we'll continue to promote it but uh thank you I can't wait to get down there. It's going to be exciting. Thank, thank you so you. much. And thank you so much for tuning in. We are going to have some more good shows coming up here on City Corner. Stick with us, and we'll see you the next time. Thank you.